welcome so I haven't come on here and done a live in a minute so I decided to um, just come on and talk to you guys while I make my dinner so hopefully this is gonna be maybe about 30 minutes right so I am making some barbecue chicken and um, chard I got some beautiful beautiful chard from my local Whole Foods store, not Whole Foods, but health food market. Um, and I love chard. I love chard partly because it's not just green, but it's green and red. So it gives, makes my food look beautiful. And that's what I love about chard. So I'm going to be making some chard and some barbecue chicken. And while I do that, you can feel free to ask me questions so that I can answer your questions and um, we can chat a little bit. So one of the things about uh, when I cook, so this is just for me personally, we like eat only chicken breasts, partly because my fault that um, my family likes other parts of the chicken, but I know that the chicken breast is the, has the least fat and I just personally like the white meat. So I'm gonna make me some barbecue chicken breast. Um, one of the things, I don't even know if you can see my pan. Can you see my pan? Um, one of the things that I did recently is I brought me this little handy dandy grilling pan. So I also like to use um, um, cast iron, cast iron pans. And so I found a griller and I'm going to actually just spray it a little bit with my, that's what I'm using. So, Waalaikum Salam Sophia, how are you? I am using my little spray stuff. So, do you have any questions for me, um, Sophia or Sheeta? Any questions that I can answer about health, fitness, nutrition, um, healthy living, any questions at all. So, today is a, hey, I miss you guys video, and I'm going to do decide to do a video about anything you want to ask. So, the other day... Um, I'll start off with some questions that uh, a few people have emailed me that might be useful for other people, right? So, Walaikum Salam, Amina and Nadim. Let me know if you have any questions I can answer while we're on. So, the other day, um, I posted up just a, a little bit about my gym experience because I like, um, I like uh, just reporting on my gym experience. So, the interesting thing is like, I've been, I've been probably active most of my life, meaning like running or biking or things like that. And, but I've always done it either, I've owned a space myself, so my own um, fitness studio, or I've always um, either worked out at home, had my own workout room. And this year I decided to get a gym membership, um, get a gym membership for the first time in my life. Can you believe it? <laughs> been a, I've been a, a fitness trainer for over a decade and I've never had a gym membership. But I got one because I decided to um, close my fitness studio a couple of years ago. And so I do most of my training online. And um, so now that I go, I'm like getting myself acclimated to um, what it's like to be a part of a gym. And it's been a really interesting experience. So I'm going to grab my... Sea salt, put a little bit of sea salt, just a tad bit, because I'm also going to put barbecue sauce on it, so I don't want to over seasoning it, over season it, and I'm going to have some paprika. Um, and so I posted up one of the, um, one of my, I've been posting kind of like my weight, and if you've been following me at all, um, not my weight, how much I weigh, but <laughs> um, if you've been following me at all, how much I lift at the gym. And part of the reason that I do that is um, because women are often very scared to lift weights. They think that they're going to get manly looking or too much muscle, and we so underestimate ourselves. And it's really, really important that you not underestimate yourself as a female and how strong you are and how strong you can be and still maintain your femininity. So one of the things, so I posted that, um, so one day I posted, so my personal goal, so if you're watching this later, what is today? Today is January the 13th, I believe it is. Yep, January the 13th. And my birthday is in exactly two months. It is, my birthday is March the 13th. 
And my goal is to be able to leg press on the leg press machine at the gym 500 pounds by my birthday. So I have eight weeks to up my weight to be able to uh, do a full set. So a full set for me is 10 repetitions. So I want to be able to push 500 pounds, 10 reps by my birthday. Right now, uh, the highest that I've tried is 410. And I've done pretty well, and I and that is kind of like at the end of my set, so I think I can push heavier than that. So I'm pretty confident that I'm going to be able to do that. That I'm going to be able to, um, I'm going to be able to to uh, get to my 500 pounds, right? The other thing is, um, and I've been lifting weights for a very long time, so that's another reason why I kind of like I can up it. So I certainly wouldn't recommend somebody who just pick up a weight to try to push 500 pounds but it just shows you how strong you can get right I don't look manly I don't have muscles like Arnold Schwarzenegger right so one of the differences one of the physiological differences between women and men is that women do not produce as much testosterone as men testosterone is the actual hormone that causes muscle growth right so it causes your causes the muscle to grow and men have much more so when a woman lifts weight one your strength is a combination of two things it is a combination of your nervous system reaction and your muscle fibers so both of them interacting together so women can increase their strength and they can be able to lift really heavy weights without gaining a lot of muscle. The testosterone is what it is what spurs the muscle growth. And so men have a lot of testosterone and so it spurs their muscle growth. So a woman can, for example, um, I was at the gym the other day and I was bicep, bicep curling 35 pounds. The gentleman next to me was bicep, by doing a bicep curl with 30 pounds. His arms were bigger than mine, but I was physically lifting more weight, right? So that is a testament as to a man and a woman can both be really strong, but the man will always have bigger muscles, right? Relatively, they will always have bigger muscles because and have a, a quicker muscle growth because of the amount of testosterone in his system. So one of the so i had kind of like a message conversation with someone and they wanted to know well how do you explain the women that we see that do these bodybuilding competition and they look like men and they have big old muscles there's a couple of ways to explain it number one if not just having muscles because there are many women who lift weights professionally and they have they have muscles and they're very well toned and they still maintain a feminine shape but we're talking about the women that sometimes that other women see and they say, wow, she really looks like, you know, if you didn't see her face, she would have a body like a man that says her muscles are that big. And I'm not condemning that or saying that that's not a good look. It's whatever your particular goal is. But there's only two ways a, a woman can actually achieve that. One, she has to take steroids and a female steroids often include testosterone as a part of those steroids. And number two, or she has a natural hormone imbalance, right? So women have more estrogen than testosterone. If your doctor takes a test and you have lots more testosterone than the uh, uh, average woman your age is supposed to have, then you have a mus uh, hormone imbalance. But that testosterone is used to spur muscle growth. So those are really the only two reasons why women would actually get that big. It could be genetic, that they genetically have... Um, um, that much testosterone in their system and or an autoimmune disease it could be a lot of reasons why they have a hormone imbalance so it's important for what I would like to impress on women is that if you're gonna lift lift really heavy the other comment that I got a lot and messages was well I lift weights but I lift five pounds because I don't want to get big arms if you're lifting five pounds unless you ha have been told by your doctor not to lift more than five pounds then you're not lifting enough weight so think about it like this. The average gallon, well, the, a gallon of milk or water weighs eight pounds. The average woman's pocketbook weighs eight pounds. 
The average person that carries around a laptop bag with a laptop in it weighs between 10 and 12 pounds. So if you're doing bicep curls and you're lifting weights and you're only lifting about five pounds, then you're not even getting functional strength meaning it's not even going to help you do your day-to-day -day activity of just carrying your pocketbook and carrying your laptop bag in order for you to build more strength to do that because one of the purposes of course of us wanting to build more muscle and get stronger is so that we can make our everyday activity much easier right you can go to the store and you can pick up something from the store and you don't need someone to help you. You don't need someone to, you can go and get a product that you want off the shelf and you don't need to say, oh, I'm going to have to wait here for 20 minutes because I got to wait for um, a store rep to come pick it up for me, right? Or I'm going to wait for my husband to come back home before I get to finish whatever project or chore that I was doing, right? So that's what we talk about when we talk about functional strength, you know? So you want to make sure that you are strong enough that you can, it is going to improve your independence. It's going to improve your day-to-day -day function, your strength in doing everything that you, um, that you do on a regular basis. So those are two things that I wanted to point out. And I'm going to see, um, <laughs> Nadim, I don't have a beauty secret. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. Wa alaikum salam, Irene. Um, and she just said, I find the human body amazing and I've been running every day before I could eat, couldn't run for five minutes, but now I can run a 5K. Awesome. And that is what, and I agree with you, the human body is absolutely amazing. That is one of the awesome things about um, movement and activity is you will progress. You don't have to be motivated. You just have to move. And if you move your body will progress and you'll be able to run faster, you'll be able to be stronger. So one of the things that, and, and I hope I'm, I'm not doing it in a braggadocious way, but I'm doing it and hope to inspire other women is, you know, I will actually be 41 in, in March. In eight weeks, I'm gonna be 41. Can you believe that? I don't even know why I'm telling you that. But part of the reason why I'm telling you that is at 41, I have four children and I am faster than I've ever been in my life. I am stronger than I've ever been in my life. I'm fitter than I've ever been in my life and probably healthier than I've ever been in my life. And inshallah, I'll continue to stay that way. So I want you, I say that because age is not an excuse. Having children is not an excuse. Not having enough time, it is not an excuse. Often people tell me, well, you know, I don't have time to exercise. I say, okay, at minimum, you need to dedicate 30 minutes a day of a really structured routine. You can get it done in 30 minutes a day. If your life is so busy that you can't take 30 minutes just for yourself, then we need to talk about you reprioritizing your life, right? There's something going on that we need to change in the way you're living your life if you can't take 30 minutes for yourself on a day. And that includes moms with kids. To me, there's no reason, even if that means um, you need to get up, uh, you know, 30 minutes earlier or uh, you need to stay up 30 minutes later, you figure out how to get 30 minutes a day in for you, for yourself. I am, so I'm going to show you my, she, Shakira says she can't run because of a knee problem, other exercises to lose weight. So if you cannot run, there are lots of different things that you can do for cardiovascular exercise. So a good weight loss program is a combination of doing cardiovascular exercise and resistance training, right? So other, other things that substitute cardio is... Um, doing biking, a Zumba class, that's cardio. Um, you can get cardio in by, um, swimming. You can get cardio in by cardiovascular exercises. Anything that raises your heart rate above 55% of your heart rate max. That is what cardiovascular exercise is. So it can be a variety of things. And if that is, if you absolutely can't even do that 
but you can lift weights or you can do squats or lunges or push-ups or any other type of weight. You can do weight training in a way that you can double, ta- you can multitask. Whereas your weight training is also your cardiovascular exercise. So that is, um, that's another option, doing what we call HIIT training or um, interval training. It's also called, also called Tabata training. You can go to my YouTube channel and you can find some at-home workouts that you can do with no equipment. Um, and I explain to you how you do them. So my YouTube channel is YouTube backslash Balance Fitness. So Balance Fitness is the name of my business. So Balance Fitness, one word, B-A-L-A-N-C-E-C-T. No, I'm sorry, B-A-L-A, and I'm giving you my website address. I don't want you to go to the website address. I want you to go to the YouTube channel. Balance, B-A-L-A-N-C-E, Fitness, F-I-T-N-E-S-S. Um, Zahida, that is exactly what I am talking about. People with knee pain, knee pain, and what do you do with knee pain? So I'm going to say a couple of things, um, about just knee pain, joint pain in general. I am not going to try to diagnose you over the internet, right? That is something that is reserved for your doctor. However, what I would tell you is there's a couple of things that you want to ask your doctor about or um, inquire about if you're having knee pain. So it's a couple of things. If you're like, oh, I have knee pain and it's just like achy joints because I'm getting older, whatever your excuse is, and we can talk about diet stuff related to that, right? Achy joints and stuff. Then you can do some things, you can do some things that that are modified, right? If your do- of course, if your doctor tells you don't squat, don't lunge, whatever, then you follow your doctor's advice. You ignore me and you follow your doctor's advice. Um, the other thing about any joint, so not just knee pain, but if you have, you know, achy shoulder or achy elbow, again, not that you've been diagnosed with something, but you just start feeling achy like those joints are getting weak. Anytime you have a weak joint, then what you have to do is you have to strengthen the muscles around that joint. So doing exercises that will actually strengthen your quadriceps your and your hamstrings is actually going to improve your knee pain. Same thing about your shoulder or your elbow or whatever joint that is, you would, you would strengthen the muscles around it to support that joint. Um, and Shira says, does it have to be 30 minutes straight of breathing heavy? Yes, it does. <laughs> 30 minutes straight of breathing heavy. So, uh, exercise prescription would be exercise a workout is not is not shorter than 20 minutes, right? So when they do research and they say, you know, they did this amount of exercise, 20 minutes is like the minimum. When you hear a recommendation of Oh, try to get five minutes here and 10 minutes there. That is not a prescription for getting stronger, fitter. That's just to get you up to move. If you're not doing anything at all, of course, have getting up and, you know, walking around the block for five minutes is better than is better than sitting on the couch. But if you're looking to improve your fitness level, improve your health, um, become stronger, become faster, um, get in better shape, if your goal is to lose weight, if your goal is to be less fatigued, then you need to exercise at a minimum. And that's for people who haven't exercised in, say, 10 years. You start with 20 minutes. Then the goal is to get yourself up. So endurance-wise, you want to be able to do an exercise a t- any type of exercise program for an hour but if you did something very intense 30 minutes would be okay t- as a maintenance right but it has to be intense if you're going to do something that's not so intense then you want to make sure that you extend it little by little so when i say that what i would what i would give as an example is you currently say you don't you currently don't exercise I'm sorry kind of looking for my onion while i talk to you because I'm gonna make me some chard, but I also wanna put my onion in it. My beautiful chard, wanna see my beautiful chard? This is my beautiful chard. 
So if you are not familiar with chard, it has a stem that's this beautiful red color. But the stem is kind of hard, right? So you are going to cook the stem first. Then after this becomes softened in the pan, then I'll add my beautiful leafy greens. I just love the way it looks. It's just so such a beautiful, beautiful leafy green. I, just, I, have, I have a thing with leafy greens. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put my chicken in the oven right now, too. <laughs> um, so I see some more questions. So uh, if you have a question, answer it, because I'm going to do a little question. Um, Munira Ahmed, salamu alaikum. I'm mentioning you by name. I see you. <laughs> Zuleika, Elisa, Eliza, right? Okay. Um, Hagar said, I'm looking to get smaller arm. Arm fat is something that I'm working towards eliminating. So far, I've been lifting, but my arms have only gotten bigger, not smaller. Is there any way I can minimize? I, I got to see more. Size of my arms without excess skin stretching. No, will my arms get smaller after they get bigger? I've been told this is what happens right before my arms get smaller. Hmm. Let me think about that for a minute. Will your... You want big, you want smaller arms. So there's a couple of things that I would recommend. And I'm gonna, if I go out, I'm sorry if I go out of camera range because um, I'm trying to put my chicken in the oven. Um, I have to let my pan get hot here. So my pan is nice and hot, and that way I can actually put my chicken, put my chicken in the oven. I'm gonna make me some grilled barbecue chicken so if you so here's the thing with arms if you are genetically predisposed to having um larger arms right so i lift weights and um one of the things that can happen with me is sometimes my arms will get bigger i'm not having that problem right now uh, my arms will get bigger than I want to because I start lifting heavier and heavier. But to avoid that as an issue, what you want to do is you want to increase your reps. So you're already lifting weights. That's excellent because that's the best way for you to tone your arms up. Um, remember that if it's if it's about the size of your arms and you need to lose weight, then you have to lose weight all over. You can't just lift weights on your arms and not attempt to lose weight because you can't you can't really spot reduce, right? We can't say, well, I don't want to lose weight any place else just on my arms, so I'm only going to do bicep curls every single day. It doesn't work that way. When your body loses weight, it loses weight everywhere, and it will include the places that you want to target. You want to, when you're doing your weight training sessions, you want to make sure that you keep your repetitions relatively high, meaning you want to keep your reps someplace around the 15 rep repetition mark, right? So 15, whatever weight you're lifting, you can lift that weight 15 times for three sets. Um, you can even go higher to like 20 if you're just talking about per particularly just spot reducing uh, or spot toning. And... Your arms really don't get bigger to get smaller. The, the, in order to get your arms smaller, you have to create more muscle and you have to reduce the fat, right? So it's a, you have to create the muscle and reduce the fat. And so that's what you would need to do as far as your arm and make sure that you are targeting all parts of your arm. So you want, you want to do biceps and your triceps, which is the, the muscle underneath. So you don't want to just do bicep curls. You want to do dips. Dips are awesome. You can do them on a chair. You can do them with no, ex with no equipment. You want to um, also make sure that you're eating to build muscle, right? So one of the, one of the things about nutrition, I think it was, um, let me put that over there. Jack Lane, he said that exercise is king, nutrition is queen, and together they make the perfect kingdom. So you have to remember that in order to build muscle, you need protein, right? And that is the best types of protein are animal-based protein, but we have food science now. So you can go and buy a really good brand of vegetarian-based protein if you don't eat meat and then supplement. So that's what I would suggest for that. Um, 
You are welcome, Inshira. Uh, Salaamu Alaikum, Susan. Uh, let's see. YouTube channel is Balanced Fitness as one word. I have to grab my pan. So I'm going to make my chart and I'm going to grab my, mm, I was looking for my olive oil, that's what I'm looking for. And it would be really sucky if I ran out, right? <laughs> You're welcome, Hager. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, thank you for tuning in, Tuma. <laughs> so I'm answering any health, fitness, nutrition, lifestyle questions that you may have. Um, I figure since I was making dinner and I have been, um, I've been launching a couple of projects and a couple of new groups. People who are in my groups know what I'm talking about. Wink, wink. <laughs> um, so I haven't been on in like a couple of weeks. So I was like, I need to talk to my peoples. So I came to talk to my peoples. Um, and I can't find my olive oil. That sucks. I would normally like really use olive oil in my pan, but uh, how about, I guess this is what happens when you don't eat a lot of fat. You just kind of like run out of it, right? Go for some ghee. So you need some type of oil in the bottom of the pan for um, the greens. I could go for ghee. I would rather olive oil, but I can do ghee. That won't be too bad, right? Um, gotta let my pan get hot. So, um... Adam from Sudan, Salaamu Alaikum. Munira, yes. Balance Fitness, one word. YouTube.com backslash Balance Fitness. And it will take you to my channel. And then you can scroll and you can see the videos. I have individual exercises. I also have exercises um, that are a group of exercises that you can do. Most of the stuff there is like Tabata training or interval training. I'm a huge, huge advocate of interval training. It is so efficient and effective, particularly if you are, um, particularly because it is good for every fitness level. So when you do interval training, you work at a level whatever your rate of perceived exhaustion is. And so it's very individualized. So for example, if you're working out for a minute and we're working out together, right? One day, one day, I'm going to have my conference, inshallah, this year, the Fit Muslim Summit. So just keep watching out for that. Um, and I say, we're going to do push-ups for a minute, right? A minute is however many, and the amount is however many you can do in one minute. So if that means that I can do, you know, 30 push-ups in a minute and you can do 10 Whatever you can do. It doesn't make my 30 better. It just makes it at my fitness level. It doesn't make your 10 bad or good. It's just your fitness level. So that's what I really love about Tabata training. So I have a couple of videos there that um, that really that explains it. Let's see. I'll tell you some of my favorite because I like recording my favorite exercises. So there is a... Um, there is a video on my YouTube channel that is um, how to burpee every exercise in your workout. And so I show this all of these variations of burpees because I love burpees. And I know everybody has a love-hate relationship with burpees, but I personally really, really love them. <laughs> um, the, other thing, the other one that is one of my favorite is um, it's called the commando push-up. Oh, I love commando push-ups. They are super, super fun. And they're challenging. And it's the only time you get to roll on the floor to do cardio. <laughs> so that's a great one for people who say they have knee problems. Try that. Let me know why you like it. <laughs> um, hey, girl, it doesn't have to be the last question, but okay. Um, is running outside better than on the treadmill? Often I find that I, can't, I can last longer on the treadmill than if I run around the neighborhood. Um, if I run it. Running outside, is it better? 
it depends on what your goals are, right? <laughs> so running outside actually uses more muscles because your body is adjusting to, you know, the sidewalk may lean or you may need to get on and off the sidewalk. So it actually uses more muscle. It takes more energy because the treadmills, treadmills are designed to be, um, to, to have bounce. So like they have padding that helps you you know, propel forward, right? But when you are running on asphalt or cement, it doesn't have that same amount. You have, your body has to make more effort to lift your leg to take the next step. So running outside, it does burn more calories. It uses more muscles um, than, it, than you do running on the treadmill. And you are correct because I have that experience as well. Running on the treadmill is easy compared to running outside. So that's why... Now that it's so it's winter where where I am and winter meaning that most days now today was really nice but most days it's too cold for me to go outside because I don't like being cold that's something that you know about me now cold is not my favorite season <laughs> Mona from Chicago salam alaikum so you're cold too right now right <laughs> right <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it's cold out. So I, um, so I'm doing a lot of my workout. Well, 99% of my workouts indoors inside the gym. And so I figure I'll keep trying to go faster on the, um, on the treadmill because I know that I'm going to lose probably 30 seconds to a minute off of my mile when I go back outdoors. So if you do treadmill, I would think I would I would suggest that if you're doing a treadmill during the winter like I am, so that you can um, avoid running outside, just keep pushing yourself.